This is Sarah. Welcome to Latino STEM Alliance webinar series, step-by-step uh, -step programming with your EV3 robot. This is the second of a series of five webinar tutorials for sensor use and programming basics to prepare you for a game challenge and competition at the end of the school year. Our live webinars take place every other Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Today's webinar will focus on the touch or bump sensor, light sensor, We'll talk about the ultrasonic sensor, weight and loop commands to create program a program using these sensors with your robot. You will need the built robot and the EV3 software application open to actively participate with the live webinar, as well as signing on to the back channel to post questions. So today's back channel is on todaysmeet.com slash LSA slash Lego I mean, dash, LSA dash Lego dash week two. Um, so the, the way this webinar works is that we don't hear your voice or we don't see your face. It's just a broadcast, but the Today's Meet gives us a, a place where you can send us questions via text and we will have somebody monitoring that channel. So if, you, if we get any questions or comments, we will be addressing that as we go through the live session. So I'm going to introduce some of the uh, sensors that we'll be working with. Sarah mentioned that we're going to work with the bump sensor and the light sensor. Where did the sensor you want to show it on here? <laughs> sure. So, sorry about that. I'm going to switch the screen over to a camera so we can show you the sensors. Um, just to discuss a little bit of the sensors, you'll notice that you have four different sensors in your kits. There's a bump sensor, a color sensor, uh, an ultrasonic sensor, and a gyro sensor. Um, today, we're going to go into a little bit of detail using the bump sensor and the color sensor, but we're actually just going to use the color sensor as a light sensor. Um, so if you hear me mention using the light sensor at any uh, point, please don't get confused. I am using the color sensor, but there is an option in the EV3 software to use it specifically as just a light sensor to detect not what color it sees, but more just the amount of light that it can detect. Um, and we'll show you how in the EV3 software uh, to choose between color sensor and light sensor once we start going. So here is the bump sensor. I think there's two of these in each kit. Um, you can see the sensing element, it's literally just a push button, and then you've got your port for the wiring in the background as well. And the other sensor we're going to look at today is the color sensor. Um, you notice there's a large lens with a smaller lens underneath it, and the same thing with that port. And the other two that we'll mention briefly uh, a little later on is the ultrasonic sensor. Um, and then our gyro sensor as well. Uh, but we will be focusing on just the uh, bump and color sensors for uh, right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is um, program the robot to use the bump sensor. And that's going to involve some drive commands and some weight commands. So just like before, we're going to add a project by clicking that plus in the top. Actually, before we program, what I want to do is actually plug the sensors into the robot so that you can see the values that the robot sees. We talked about this port view before. Um, oh, the robot's plugged in? Great, thank yep. you. Um, and just like we saw in the last seminar, we can see motors B and C um, that are plugged specifically into um, those ports. Uh, so what I can do is actually plug in the sensors into different ports as well, and we should be able to see those. So I think your booklet asks you to put the bump sensor into plug one. So I'm going to plug that in now see and there it's recognized so we can see now we have a bump sensor here um, as our input in port one and the value at the top says zero i'm going to push the button on the bump sensor and switches to one when i release it goes back to zero so that is the full range of values that you'll really see from that bump sensor either zero when the button is not pushed or one when it is pushed and we'll show you how to program with that um, so in order to program with the bump sensor, I'm going to write a program that basically asks the robot to wait until the bump sensor is pushed in, uh, to drive forward. So going to the orange tab, which is flow control, um, I'm going to click and drag a wait command onto the screen. So it's the first uh, block that will be on our program. And let's select bump sensor. It's called touch sensor here. Um, so there is two options once you select which sensor you want. There's compare and change. Uh, for bump sensor, I usually stick with uh, compare state. Um, change state really looks at 
instead of looking at um, what a certain value is, it just waits until there's a change. So if you select a change of state and you started your program and the button was not pushed, it would wait until the button was pushed. That's the change of state. The opposite would be with change of state. If you started the program and the button was already pushed, it would wait until it was released. Um, here, we really just want to see that button be pushed, so I'm going to stick with compare state. It's a little confusing to explain with just the bump sensor. I'll try to explain the difference between those two when we get into the light sensor, and that should make a little more sense. Um, so here we've got our bump sensor with compare state. We can see the next option is set to one right now. Um, there's three different options when you're doing compare state. Either uh, one is pressed, so it's waiting for the button to be pressed. Uh, two would be released, which means you would wait for a release. So um, yeah, so that's that's um, value. That would be known as value zero. Um, that one's a little tough to explain. Basically, you would look for any time the button is released instead of any time the button is pressed for that. And then option two is both uh, press and release. That would be a full bump. So it waits until the button is pressed and then released, um, which the program defines as a bump. But we're going to stick with one right now, which is just pressed. Um, and the second option is to sort of wire in inputs from different sensors. We won't be using that today. Um, and then up top, just like with every other uh, module that uses a motor or a sensor, there's a different ports, and we're going to stick with port one, because that's what we want, where we are going to plug our pump sensor into. And then I'm just going to drag down a tank drive and have it drive forward for, say, 1.5 rotations at the standard power. Um, so this very simple program, basically once it starts, it's going to wait until the bump sensor button is pushed, and then once it does, it'll drive forward for one rotation. So I'm going to just plug the sensor onto the robot, and then plug it in, and we'll get the one. So I named the project, I didn't change the name, so the project is just called Project. And then inside of that, TouchSense is the name of the program. So I hit the middle button, and that starts running. You can see the program is running, and like I said, it is waiting. Um, yep, it's waiting for that button to be pressed before it runs. So as soon as I push this button, it goes forward for one rotation, and then we can see that the screen goes back to the menu, which means that program is done running. So that's a very simple program. It was just wait for the button to be pushed and then drive forward. Um, and that is one very quick example of how to use uh, the wait command with the touch sensor to program your robot. Uh, next, we'll look at the Light sensor, we'll take this off. And could you switch back to, actually, yeah, let's show the light sensor. So we're going to plug this into, written down on my script somewhere, light sensor, it's plugged into port three. So we're gonna use the same wire because we're only doing one sensor at a time right now. We're just gonna plug this end into port three of our robot. And I'll show you the different values the light sensor sees and then how to program with it on the Mindstorm screen. So now we just need to plug the robot back in to the computer. Okay, so now we can see the two motors again, but this time we can see our light sensor. Um, this little image here means it's looking at reflected light. We'll explain the difference between those in a little bit. Uh, but right now we can see it's at 63. That's with the light sensor facing straight down on the table. I'm actually going to pick up the robot and point it to the ceiling. We can see now the value is very low. It switches between basically 0 and 3. Um, so right now it's looking for reflected light, but because the sensor is pointing to the ceiling, there's no surface for the light to reflect off of, which is why it's basically 0. There's no reflected light. If I slowly lower this towards the table, we should see that value slowly increase. Yep, there it goes. And now it's resting completely on the table, and we have a value of 60. We have it accidentally lean it too far forward. Yeah, it's too dark because the light isn't actually working. So there we can see that you're, you're going to get a different value uh, of ranges from your light sensor. Now again, this one is using reflected light, which means that there is a light source coming off the sensor. Um, so it's basically shooting light and seeing how much is reflected back. So if you're wondering if your sensor is not working, if you don't see a red light shining down for reflected light, you know that that is a problem. So for this... Um, for this test, what we're going to do <clears throat> to show you how to program with this is we're going to have a robot drive until it sees um, a blue line um, that we're just putting on the table right now. Thank you. Which means step one is going to be drive forward. And then step two will be our wait command for a light sensor. So again, the actual sensor is called a color sensor. 
Um, and here we have change and compare. Do you think we could do both? Show the difference with this? Yeah. Okay, so I know more about compare than I do change. Basically, change would look at regardless of what the value is. Let's say your starting value is 30. It would wait until there is a change of plus 10 or minus 10 or whatever you specify. Um, so instead of searching for a specific value, it would be searching for a change in value. Where compare is really you'd want to set it to, if you had a threshold of 50, it would wait until something fell below 50 or fell above 50. So we want to compare reflected light intensity with our light sensors. So right now, the two operators um, are your comparisons, basically greater than, less than, or greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to, and then what specific light value we want to see. So we need to figure out what values we really want here. In order to do that, we're going to use this uh, value that the light sensor sees to compare. So right now the robot is resting on the table. It's a white surface and we have a light value of 62, 63. If we move the robot so that the light sensor is now over the blue tape, it's reflecting off this blue tape, it's much less reflective than the table. We can see the value drops down to 13 or 12. So if we want our robot to keep driving until it sees that blue line. We know that it want, we want to wait until it sees something less than what it currently saw on the table. So on the table, it was mid-60s, it was low 60s. Off the table, it was 10. So 50 could work. I'm going to change it to 30. Just for consistency, I like to have something sort of halfway between the two. You can have your students actually take the average of the two and use that for a more reliable number as well. Uh, so in order for this to work, I think we went over this last time, but instead of going forward for a set number of rotations, we want this to be set to just on, so there's no duration for your drive. Now it knows that it's going to keep driving until it gets the input from the sensor. So we have drive until the light value falls below a power of, or a value of 30. So... You know, I forget. Let's try this, see if it works, um, and then add a stop. Technically, I don't think you do, but okay. it's probably a good practice to have it in there. Okay. <laughs> the way Mindstorms work is that when it gets to the end of the program, it'll stop the motors no matter what. But just so that you don't get confused, it's probably better to actually stop the motors after it's done. That's a good point. So if it was just these two, it would stop. But if you start writing more complex programs with more things afterwards, you'd actually want that stop in there. So we have this. Um, with the same name, so it'll just overwrite our touch sensor program. I'm going to download that. All right, so there's our robot again. That's our light sensor right there, and this is our blue line. Let's back it up a little bit. And there it is. So you can see, could you see the blue line in that? There's a little bit of delay because the sensor's a little past the blue line. Um, that is because the robot was driving so fast that by the time it processed the line, it ran off. So sometimes when using sensors, it's better to have your robot drive a little slower than that. So next, what we're going to do is show you how to program with um, sensors using a loop so that you can sort of repeat the same process, Switch back. which is useful for different types of games that we tend to use. So now, instead of just stopping, we're going to have our robot back up. So we're going to have it go back for a set number of rotations. Let's say negative 75 and negative 75 will be a good number that wouldn't run off the table for rotations. Should we stick with just one? Sure. Okay. And now we're going to drop a loop and place all three commands inside of that loop. So now what the robot should do is drive forward until it sees the line and then back up. And then once that's done, it should continue doing that. Forward, line, back up, over and over again. So that's plugged in. Let's download that. And now it just keeps going back and forth. And this is a good time. This program will never end because it's looping. So we hit that stop button there. Turn the program. All right, so those are the uh, main fundamentals we wanted to explain. Right now, that loop wasn't ending until we actually pushed stop on the robot. But you can see here, all those different sensors we were using are available.
um, along with the brick buttons themselves. So if you had that loop running with the light sensor, you could actually have the loop end when you push with the touch sensor. So now this would run just like before, but instead of having to stop with the robot, you could actually just push the bump sensor and it would end the loop. And that's a good way of having, if you want more commands to happen afterwards, um, you could program this loop and then have maybe more loops or more commands afterwards as well. You just have to make sure that the loop is not set to infinity. Other options would be counts. Now you can have your loop set for a set number of times. Now the loop will run four times and it will end. That doesn't use a sensor. Also time, you can have the loop run for five seconds, 10 seconds, and then after that time, it'll move on. So let's try using compare for light. Uh, color sensor, or oh, that was compare, so we're gonna try change. Oh, yeah. So now we're looking at um, either an increase. So now for a change, they wanna know if it's an increase or a decrease. We know when it's driving, um, on the table, it saw a value of 60, and on the tape, it saw about 12. So we want to look for a decrease. Um, and that was a big decrease. It was about 50. So why don't we say look for a decrease of 30? Now what it's going to do is regardless of what the initial value is, um, it'll look for a drop in 30. But we know with the two values that we saw that a drop in 30 will work. So let's try downloading this and see if it does the same thing. So now it'll drive forward, wait until it sees a drop uh, of 30 in light and then drive backwards for one rotation and keep repeating that we have it set for 10 seconds so it'll run that loop for 10 seconds and then stop on its own and depending on what kind of table or floor you have you're going to have to ch change the value for the light sensor we have a really bright white table and a blue line so our numbers were about 60 and 10 but if you have a dark table you can use a white masking tape so your numbers are going to be flipped or if you have something like gray or some sort of colored table tabletop, you're going to have different numbers. Yeah, it's always good to use that port view on the computer screen to see what the values are before you start programming. Okay, so that ran about nine times and took ten seconds. Great, so there is using the same type of sensor, but using uh, change instead of compare. Um, so feel free to explore with both of those, which one you're more comfortable with. Uh, they both do work. So we're gonna have a couple of challenges for you to complete over the next few weeks. Um, the first one is going to be a something called a table bot, which is a to program the robot so that it does not fall off the table. And just to show you an example, find it in here. Try that again. There we go. So it's always good to have somebody waiting to catch the robot, even if you think the program is working. So. <laughs> yeah, even even if the program works, sometimes the wheels get to the edge of the table before the sensor. Right. So this particular bot drove up to the edge, and it uses a light sensor up here. Basically, when it gets to the edge of the table, there is no more light reflecting back into the sensor, so it starts seeing a darker number or a lower number. And when it sees that, it backs up, turns a little bit, and then keeps on doing that forever. So that's what we're looking for in the first challenge. And again, please, please, please have somebody waiting to catch the robot in case it falls off, or catch it before it falls off. <laughs> um, the second challenge is a line follower challenge show you what I mean by that. So we have a line on the table right there. And we would like you to program your car so that it follows the line. So this program just follows the line back and forth. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how it works? <laughs> um, sure. You're using change for that, right? Uh, I believe so. Well, yeah. So as we saw before, there are different 
um, values that the light sensor sees when it's on the table and off the table. And you notice that the robot was zigzagging down the line. So basically what you can program your light to do, or your, uh, sorry, what you can program your robot to do is say it's on the, starts on the table, turn to its left, that's its left, turn left yes. until it sees a lower value. And once it sees that lower value, you tell it to turn right until it sees a lighter value. And you just use a loop to alternate between those two. So light value, turn left, low value, turn right, repeat, light left, low right. And that way it'll just keep zigzagging between, not necessarily down the line, but between the uh, border, between the table and the line itself is really what it's zigzagging down. So you notice that it'll stick to one edge of the tape when it does that because it's really zigzagging down that border. We uh, showed two examples of how to use the light sensor to not drive off the table and how to use the bump sensor as well. Um, for another challenge, to use two sensors at once, you can have your light sensor at the front here and then find a way to build a bump sensor in the back. And then what you can do is have your robot stuck between an edge of a table and a wall here and try to program your robot to alternate between drive forwards until it sees the edge of the table and then back up until it bumps into a wall and then keep bouncing back and forth between those two. Uh, you'll notice that the fundamentals for this will be very similar to that line follow, but you'll be using two different sensors instead of just one. You could also start exploring the, the ultrasonic sensor, although we didn't really cover it today. Um, it's this little guy over here. And this senses distance. So you could have this pointing down in the back and sense the edge of the table in the back as well and make sure it doesn't fall off the back side of the table. Mm -hmm. Or you could even use it instead of the bump sensor to point straight back and actually stop once it gets to a certain distance from the wall instead of waiting until it bumps into the wall. And then the final sensor that uh, we briefly mentioned before was the gyro sensor. Um, this sensor actually um, will be built so that it's right on top of your robot here. And what this can do is actually measure rotations. So if you rotate like this way or this way, you'll see the same values that you'd see in the light sensor. This one can be a little trickier to program with, but it actually rotates with your robot. So you can try to um, actually have your robot turn and detect how much it's turning and when to stop turning. Um, so that one, I would say, save for last. Um, but it is a very interesting, sometimes frustrating, but rewarding sensor to use uh, if you can pull it off. So I think that's... Um I think that's everything for what we wanted to cover for um, uh, sensors and programming basics. Yes, let me just, I just want to show one thing that happens very often. So today we use the wait command and the loop to work with some sensors. Now, if you go into the yellow menu, you'll see a bunch of different sensor icons down here. And you might be sort of inclined to take this and try to use it in place of a wait command. And we are going to tell you not to do that. Um, the yellow commands here just give you the sensor value, and it doesn't actually do anything. And one thing about sensors is that until you program it to do something with the sensor numbers, it actually doesn't do anything on its own. So these, the yellow blocks here, all, all, all it does is feed out the number of what the sensor is reading right now, and then you have to do something with that number. Um, so um, we're not going to cover that today. We may get into that later on in the year, maybe in January or um, but for now, stick to the orange commands. So I'm going to delete that, stick to the orange menu, use the wait commands and the loop command. And we're going to get into the switch next week, or in two weeks, or in next three session. weeks, <laughs> next session. Yes. Um, but for now, uh, stick to the wait command and the loop command mm -hmm. and the motor icons. Uh, one more um, just bit of advice. If you do end up using the gyro sensor, um, if you notice when you turn on your robot, you push that button, and it takes about what, 15, 20 seconds for it to turn on. Um, if your gyro is plugged in, you need to make sure the robot is completely still while it's turning on, or else the gyro values get really weird. So if you do use that gyro, make sure it's plugged into the robot before you turn the robot on, and make sure the robot is completely still while it's booting up, or else it's just not going to work. So that concludes our second uh, webinar. We thank you for tuning in to, for, to today's session. We encourage the students to complete the homework challenge. Um, and if you do, you can submit it to Google Classroom. Again, we thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. And if you have any questions um, be before next time while you're working on these projects, feel free to put it into Google Classroom or just send an email, and we will try to troubleshoot with you. Uh -huh.